Good if. I offer my hand. Your name is also a prayer for us. I offer my humble obeisances unto your lotus feet. I'm grateful that I'm allowed to read a verse from Radha Rasa Sudha Nidhi, from the nectar moon of Sri Radha's sweetness. Reading to you, dear Gurudev, for me is again a really precious present that I receive. Thank you so much. I also bow down deeply to all assembled devotees. I have chosen verse 25. In this verse, some really confident aspects are revealed. This verse shows a most confidential one-to-one -one situation. There is only Radharani with one maidservant. And there is the maidservant and Shri Krishna have a very nice communicating situation, only eyes by eyes. And there is a really secret meeting only between Radha and Krishna. And the expert service from the maidservant From her, we should learn. It is like a lecture of this expert service. So let us take some deep breaths, our hands on our belly and relax. Let us inhale deeply and exhale relaxing. Nothing is to do, only to relax. And let us being immersed into this most confidential situation. It is a fresh young morning in summer. Heaven is blue, really blue as in the mountains. This very blue. Drops of dew are glistening. And because it is quite early, it is somewhat cool but it will become really warm. It is a bit the summer. Srimati has waken up with an intense desire to meet with Krishna, but this desire is more unconsciousness. She doesn't really know it. It is deep within her. There is a light breeze carrying a sweet, at the same time, Lemon-like fragrance. Srimati wants to take a bath in the Yamuna, only taking Tulsi Manjari with her. And Tulsi understands. Yamuna is slowly flowing, deep, dark, reminding Srimati on her beloved. Yamuna is so happy that she can serve Radhika. She has to come down herself, not to swell up, because she could disturb Sri Radha. So Yamuna becomes more dark and flows more slowly. Sri Mati and the maidservant are at the banks of Yamuna, thinking they were alone. But a parrot has told Krishna that Sri Radha is going out to take baths in a lonely place by the Yamuna. So, under a pretext, Krishna secretly came to this place, climbing up into a kadamba tree, hiding himself, and watches this beautiful situation. The manjari is massaging Shimati's ambrosial limbs with a fragrant oil. She does it with her very expertise. She is touching Srimati's golden limbs as if Krishna were doing it. So now the verse 25. O Sri Radhike, when can I see your beautiful Blooming lotus face that grows in a lake 
full of true love for Krishna. And that face that is full of honey, that intoxicates Krishna, that is like a moon that causes the ocean of Rasa to swell. And that is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish, like bumblebees. I repeat this verse. O Sri Radhike, when can I see your beautiful, blooming lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love, true love for Krishna? And this lake is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna. And your face that is like a moon that causes the ocean of Rasa to swell. And this face is beautified by curly locks of fair that are bluish like bumblebees. A lotus flower in a love lake commentary. Shripat is in his Swarupa Vish from beginning to end. He does not have to endeavor to get these visions. They come spontaneously. He floats on waves of prayer into the kingdom of transcendental pastimes. In his Kinkiri Swarup, Shripad has now finished massaging Srimati's limbs with oil. The maid servant knows what Srimati doesn't know. Nag Nagarendra, the king of womanizers, is admiring her uncovered limbs from up in a tree. Swamini is absorbed in thoughts when her maidservant calls her. Swamini, get up and take your bath. Srimati is startled and says, who is it? Is it you anointing me with oil? I forgot it was you. Your touch is just like Krishna's. Blessed is this maidservant that she can touch Swamini exactly as Shyam does. She is an eternally perfect maidservant from whom the aspirants should learn their services. Sri Lanarottama Das Thakur sings, I will joyfully serve Radha and Krishna along with their dearest maidservants by dressing their limbs. Please keep me at your lotus feet for such services amidst your dearest maidservants. I will always stay with these maidservants as their maidservant, serving you in different ways with fragrant sandal paste, jeweled ornaments, and silken garments without even a tiny drop of mercy from these eternally liberated maidservant, it is impossible to experience and perform such services. Lord Krishna explained in Lord to Lord Brahma prior to the four root verses of the Bhagavatam what 
is the importance of grace from above. O Brahma, may you realize the full actual truth about my forms, about my qualities, and about my activities by my grace. Without mercy, it cannot be understood. Therefore, there is a compassionate blessing here. The secrets of Raga Bhajana can only be known through grace. The only cause of Raga Nuga Bhakti is the mercy of Krishna or of his devotees. The Acharyas are most merciful for they left their experience behind in their books. Shripat Sarasvati's heart's prayers are kept in this Radha Rasa Sutanidi, the nectar ocean of Radha's Rasa. An aspirant is blessed if he or she can taste even one drop of this nectar ocean. The maid servant has completed Srimati's bath and starts to dress and ornament her. But Swamini has noticed an unnatural look in the maid servant's eyes and quickly covers her limbs. Startled, she looks all around thinking, is beautiful Shyam maybe behind me somewhere? Shyam is enchanted by the sweet gestures Srimati makes at that moment and the maidservant feels blessed and the maidservant feels blessed when Swamini sees her maid servant looking at the top of the nearby Kadamba tree, she understands that there is a secret hidden in one of the tree's branches. And when she looks carefully, she sees a bluish effulgence emanating from it. Although Krishna tries to hide himself. Srimati catches him with her glance. At that moment, her limbs are adorned with the bhava bhushana, with an emotional ornament called vilasa. And many intense emotions become manifest in her. Shyness and opposition pull her homewards. Heedlessness urges her to perform a duty of picking flowers as if she was going to pick flowers after her bath to worship the sun. And ecstasy and lusty desires enter deeply into her body and mind, causing an indescribable condition in her. I would like to repeat this, this many intense emotions that become manifest in her. At the same time, it is shyness and opposition pull her homewards, heedlessness, urges her to perform her duty of picking flowers. 
as if she was going to pick flowers after her bath to worship the sun. And at the same time, there is ecstasy and lusty desires that enter deeply into her body and mind, causing an indescribable condition in her. Shyama Sundara considers himself blessed by seeing her sweet condition at that moment. When I see Radha's face and eyes in that mood, I get millions of times more pleasure than when I directly unite with her. Swamini chastises her maidservant with her eyes, saying, If you saw him, then why didn't you say anything? The maidservant answers also only with her eyes, I didn't see him. I also saw him just now. Actually, it was Srimati's innermost desire to see Sham when she decided to bath in the Yamuna that morning. The jeweled temple of her mind was filled with the light of hope for the fulfillment of her desire. How beautiful is her face when she shows the sweet moods of bashfulness, opposition, joy, and desire. How beautiful is her face when she shows the sweet moods of bashfulness, opposition, joy, and desire. This verse describes the sweetness of her face at that very moment. The poets try to compare Sri Radha's face to a lotus flower or to the moon. But can the transcendental Prema Swarupini Sri Radhika ever be compared to any mundane object? There is no other way to understand Prema Mai Radha in truth than only through love, through devotion, and through surrender. There is no other way to understand Prema Mai Radha in truth than through love, through devotion, and surrender. All her emotions will then also be understood. Therefore, it is said that her face is a blooming lotus in a lake full of love for Krishna. For Krishna, the absolute truth. If Sri Radha's face is not compared to a lotus growing from an ordinary lake, but to a lotus growing from a lake filled with the nectar of love for Krishna, it could be somewhat of a worthy comparison. Her face blooms up with joy and desire when she sees Krishna and it becomes relishable like honey. 
Svananda Sidu. The words Svananda Sidu also can mean Svasyaya, no, I said in English, the sweetness of Sri Radhika's face intoxicates Krishna. Her face is like the honey of bliss for her girlfriends and for the maidservants when they see this face. The practicing devotees are also intoxicated by ecstatic love when they remember the sweetness of Srimati's face. The practicing devotees are also intoxicated by ecstatic love when they remember the sweetness of Srimati's face. How sweet is that meditation? Srimati has just bathed and her curly locks fall over her face like thirsty bees surrounding a honey-filled golden lotus growing from a love lake. Shamasundra slowly comes down from the tree branch. Waves of desire swell in the ocean of his erotic mellows when he sees Srimati's moon-like face and with his eyes he prays to the maidservant to show them a nice bower on the bank of the Yamuna where he can unite with Srimati. Shyamasundra slowly comes down from the tree branch. Waves of desire swell in the ocean of his erotic mellows when he sees Srimati's moon-like face. And only with his eyes, he prays. Krishna prays to the maidservant to show them a nice bower on the bank of the Yamuna where he can unite with Srimati. Swamini is also very eager to fulfill Krishna's desires. The maidservant, with her very expertise, arranges for the meeting of this anxious pair in a bower on the bank of the Yamuna and looks through the holes of the foliage to admire their sweet pastimes. Suddenly, the transcendental, the transcendental vision disappears and Shripat pitifully prays when can I see these sweet pastimes? Ray's lotus face is the abode of all beauty, shining beautifully like a honey dripping, hundred petaled lotus in a pond of sweetness full of glistening waves. Roy's lotus face is the abode of all beauty, shining beautifully like a honey dripping, hundred petaled lotus in a pond of sweetness full of glistening waves. Her spotless lotus face is filled with a fragrance of full bliss 
and the sweetest nectarian honey and the curly locks surrounding it are like bees playing around this hundred petaled lotus in the pond of sweetness full of glistening waves. That is a realm that delights everyone's eyes. This full moon of Radha's blissful face increases the nectar ocean of self-bliss. Prabhupada says, when will this fortune come to me that I can see this moon-like face? The verse, O Sri Radhike, when can I see your beautiful blooming lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love for Krishna. And this lake is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna and your face that is like a moon that causes the ocean of Rasa to swell. And this face is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like bumblebees. Thus, and this beautiful verse 25. <laughs> Jai Shri Radha, beautiful. Good if it's relishing when you are reading, Sudev. So, thank you for reading this with all of your heart. I just want to share a little bit what I felt when you were reading. Maybe others also want to share, and God also will share by His mercy. As we know, the secrets of Raga Bhajan can only be known through grace of Krishna or His devotees. So it means Radha Mohan and their servants. By the mercy of Radha Mohan and their servants, our beloved Gude and our Param Gude, we have gotten the beautiful Karma Gayatri mantras. And when you were reading this, I felt like being in Karma Gayatri. There's Radha and Mohan, and they try to meet, and the maid servant is actually arranging. This 24 and half. And where the half is, the mercy of Radha and Mohan meeting is somehow arranged. That is such a big and beautiful and lovely secret that where the weight of the half is going at that side. It will happen. So here we have the Shimati Radhika going uh, to the Yamuna. The Yamuna herself is also reminding her, and she is bathing in Shyam and remembering all her meetings and her feelings. And then after bathing and being dried, or when she is anointed with the oils. She feels that Shyam is there and she, she feels that uh, 
these emotions that are coming to this uh, climax, which is called in Sanskrit uh, terms, Kila Kinchitva. These are the feelings when she is full of attraction, but also full of hesitation. These are the contradictory feelings. And they are they are building up in her that she forgets everything. She is doing things that are maybe hard to understand. She starts to pick the flowers, although it's not the time to pick the flowers now. But when she is finally seeing Shyam, because the maidservant is indicating, look, there, it's him. I'm sorry, it was not my fault. <laughs> I didn't know it also. Then she is blooming up fully, and then her face is so beautiful. And I like this description of uh, Ananda Das Babaji about her curly locks. And then I, I try to remember what Buddhist always teaches us that the curly locks are also Mohan. Because everything that grows, that comes out from Swamini's transcendental body is also the love Mohan. And the curly locks is Mohan and they fall over her face like thirsty bees. So Mohan is coming out of Shimati Radhika in the form of her bluish beautiful, shining, shimmering locks after she took the bath in Mohan, <laughs> in the Yamuna. And the, the thirsty bees, they want to kiss a honey-filled golden lotus face. So that honey-filled golden lotus face, it's full of nectar, honey-filled. The bees, they want to jump into their they have to be careful when they try to jump inside that they will not drown in that unfilled lotus nectar. And so when Shyam and Mohan is seeing Shimati Radhika in her honey-filled golden lotus face, he becomes so excited and also a little bit shaky that he has to go down very slowly from the tree. <laughs> he has to go very slowly <laughs> because he might trip or he might lose his consciousness. And that's not the appropriate time now to lose consciousness. So in that feeling also, he has to pray to the maidservant. Now he, he does it only... <laughs> Yes, I, I like this very much that Krishna is, is communicating with the maiden only by eyes. And she answers all yes. the No words. <laughs> the Bhava Nitra Gurudev is, is telling that we have to also we track, we practice that. Uh, how do we practice it? We practice it with the Guru Manjari. And we have to also uh, be always connected. What is the feeling? What is the next? service, how can I um, understand what Guru Manjari wants? And also Krishna, he is, uh, he is like in this connection, com uh, completely dependent on the maidservants, on the small Tulasi Manjari. Oh, please, and now we are both so confused by each other's attraction and we have these overwhelming emotions. Can you please help us to find the nice things? But what is also so 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 fine is that uh, Tulsi at the same time serves Sri Radhika and Sri Krishna. Yeah, she said it last words. If you can't do it, I will do it for you. She begs. Yes. Yeah, you remember. So yes. in this very moment, both together, this is so confidential, so intimate. Ah. And that is and that is our our meditation. It can be one of our meditations when we are chanting Kama Gayatri. That is when they are anangam, when they are coming together and they want to meet. 
and the and the maid servant is doing the service. They're helping them to meet, and they are both anxious. That's what what the, it says here. The, the, for the anxious pair. So it's a beautiful, beautiful um, <laughs> meditation. <laughs> yes. Krishna hasn't seen Srimati's limbs anytime before. It's the first time. And Srimati is being seen for the first time. It's an <laughs> anxious situation. <laughs> Both they are shy. Mm, yeah, also it's an, very, very, very shy and, and full of desire. Mm-hmm. And they are both a little bit confused. And <laughs> <laughs> they need the help of the of the kinkaris now. So yeah, this is our 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 good fortune that we have in this service that we have to follow the, the maid servants, the kinkaris, our Raga Nuga. Rupanuga Acharyas who have guided us to this point, our oh, Gurudev who has guided us to this point that we can feel, actually we feel needed, we feel um, welcomed and we feel very much uh, given the mercy to feel all, all of this. Yes, that's, 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 that's really mercy. Aspiring, that we are aspiring more and more for this uh, yes. growing of feelings inside of us to always want to be a servant of the Dasis, the Dasis of the Dasis. Radhe, Radhe. Can, can, I, can I come in? To the, to the wonderful uh, Rasik exchange. Radhe Radhe Sanitari Sudevi. Thank you for your Come and you are always, uh, we are always together in one kunj. That's the point, no? And uh, first you're pulling us in. Now it's difficult to get out from the kunj meditation. Uh, I was just, um, one thing came to me. I'm listening to this verse, which is so beautiful, like by Sudhiri. And uh, Sunit, you explained so nicely how to incorporate this Leela into our calm gaiti mantra meditation and how important it is to connect the Diksha mantra with Leela Smar and right? This is how Gurudev is being uh, telling us and, and hinting us, and more and more is giving us, you know, uh, the direction how we should. Um, chant and what the meaning of the half is, no? Buddha loves this half so much and I felt it was a beautiful continuation of uh, yesterday's um, sharing which we had in the afternoon creation Zoom that uh, how important the service of the manjari is here, right? So Devi was saying in the beginning already creating the atmosphere, it's so intimate and confidential, like uh, that here, uh, Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati in his King form is alone with Swamini on the banks. Now what happens is that how, how the meeting can take place, both are overwhelmed, as Suniti said, with feelings and emotions, and they are really not able you know, to get together, but here the Manjuri's work is so beautiful. And without the Manjuri, how can this Lula take place? How can this excitement, how can all this part you know, come to the surface and be expressed and felt? It's only possible when the dust is with Radharani. And there's also a very nice sequence to this Leela. So when Mohan is on the tree, hiding and secretly anticipating Swami to come there and take a bath, or being massaged on the bank by the manjari. And in the moment when the manjari opens the limbs, the dress of Radharani, he can spot it. And the manjari notices him, right? And he's, with his eyes, as today he said, he's praying to her, like, please don't tell her, don't tell her. And there, I want to relish more 
of this scene. No, please, could you continue, but don't tell her. And when Swami finds out that he's been on the tree, she gets very emotional and she gets very upset with her King Curry and says, why didn't you tell me he's there? You know, you should have told me. And then there is a, a nice uh, adding to this. And then the King Curry says, but my dear Swami, you saw him with the side long glance. You could see him yourself. And that's why you, but you didn't say anything. So don't blame me for that. You actually wanted him to come. Mm -hmm. You actually wanted him to see you. So, and now then she goes to arrange. No, Radharani gives her the hint with her eyes. The nice time that she arranges to find the ideal perfect bower where they can meet. So just to conclude um, from here, is the importance of this half. This half is so essential, as Guruda said, and it's such a precious gift that we can be that half in the in the 12th and plus 12. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a gift. It's a gift. Rade, Rade. Yeah. Oh, very uh, sweet and nice uh, views which were exchanged. I would like to give light to another aspect. So he has said that the lotus is growing in a sea of love. Mm. So actually, Radharani is not just a sea of love. She is an endless, endless broad, an endless deep ocean of Mahabhav. So why it is just a sea here? We may say there are many, many types of honey, right? If you are going to let your bees fly to all different kinds of flowers, then you have a mixture of honey, all kind of tastes is inside. But there are also very special honeys when the bees are just going to specific flowers or spe specific trees. And then this honey is also very specific. And it has a specific taste. And this taste is for the ones who can relish that. So here specific taste is given to Mohan. Radharani's lotus-like face is growing in a sea of love. And the sea of love is a mixture of she wants to go out, take a bath, and she wants to pick flowers for the sun god. She has to go home because all the rules she is bound to, she has to fulfill. On the other side, the feeling of I don't care is inside of her because she also wants to enjoy. And what does this mean to enjoy in her case? She wants her Mohan 
to enjoy a special taste today. So this mixture of um, opponent of I have to take care of my religious and uh, social rules and all these different kind of feelings in her are creating this very tasteful, specific honey. And Mohan, the bee, has come to taste this specific taste. Because this actually he is saying in this verse also makes him much more satisfied than even in sexual union with her. E bhava yukta deki radasya nayan sangama hoite sukapai koti luna. This is from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. So this is the high and specific taste our Smamani wants to give to her beloved. And the Kinkari is helping in such a wonderful and highly clever way. And in this case, she has to also talk with Mohan to help Swamini to fulfill her wish because her enjoyment is the enjoyment of Mohan. Jai Shirati. Dade, dade. Calling from the left hand of Gopinath Bhaya. <laughs> I wanted to add my reaction uh, as well. And also repeat my warmest thanks to Sudevi for this lovely presentation of the text and for this wonderful um, introduction to the, to the reading. I really enjoyed that very, very much. So it brought us into the landing, got us ready for, to listen. Just beautiful, thank you. I have two reactions to the, to, the, to the reading, and they both start from remembering what the function of Radha Rasa Sudhaniti is. It's a, it's a prayer, of course, to Radha Rami, uh, asking to... Saraswati asking to find a way to help and support to be to play the role of uh, Manjari and to further the divine love, the divine love relation. And then under that, Spavaji then em em embellishes this project, tries to find new ways to nuance it and, and bring it further. And so what I read in it, what I hear in it, and Sir David's reading, and these sort of things. One is uh, how complex the love is, and I'm thinking of this segment of the of the text where uh, it describes the contradictions that that Radhika has. She's confused. She resists. She's shy. She wants. She's busy. She's distracted. She's thinking of of other things. And if we can understand this as a kind of Hmm. description of divine love and all that complexity and richness. Then just speaking for myself very, very personally now, this really reassures me because I feel the little part and parcel of divine love in my heart in that same way, full of contradictions, full of insecurity. Hmm. I want, I don't want, yes, no, resist, beauty, Ugliness. It's all in there. So I'm very assured in a way when I read uh, this 
representation of the emotions of our um, And then the second observation is along the same lines, really, because what we see is that um, uh, uh, there's something that the, the Manjari knows that Radharani does not know. So she's hiding information while uh, Radharani is in the tree, uh, sorry, not in the tree, but uh, Mohan is watching from the tree and she senses something in the eye uh, of, of the Manjari and the Manjari doesn't tell her. So there's some this sort of hide and seek of knowledge too within the divine love. So between the, the Manjari and the, and the lover. And this also kind of picks up this, this feeling that we have as lovers ourselves, as, as uh, part and parcel of the divine love that there are internal tensions between our mm. interests and our love and, and the way they're okay down. A little bit too personal, more personal than you might want to have. But there you have it. So, uh, if I can say something, because this verse and commentary is so beautiful, and the uh, commentary of devotees are so sweet, and uh, some things are coming to me because of these beautiful commentaries of you. I never thought about this before. Although I know this verse, like many of you. Actually, when I was listening Suniti, how she was explaining, and uh, Gauravani and all of you, I felt that this is actually silent Lila. Although these words are expressing, but the lila is very silent. Because there is no words between Manjari and Radhika, and there is no words between Manjari and Krishna, and there is no words between Krishna and Radhika. This is the perfection of Paraki above. And we can hear this loud silence of Lila in our heart, only in our heart. Mm -hmm. So we can see why it's like that, because the emotions in this Lila are so encharged, intense, that only eyes can express these feelings, this conversation. And only through eyes, the seva can be done in very silent way. So we, can, we have here silent talk, silent seva, and silent lila. And this kind of lila is making such a deep samskaras, especially in the association of so nice devotees who can relish this and to give us some drops. And like Goravani said, he read this verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, and I don't know from where, but I remember that Krishna is a thousands and thousands and thousands more satisfied to look on Radhika's blooming face than to embrace her. So this is purity of transcendental love. And through her face, 
she is expressing everything what is in her heart. Completely everything. Suniti mentioned Kila Kinchit. Baba is mentioning here Vilasa symptoms. And these symptoms are combined together on the face and all over the body. So Krishna is Rasika Shekhar. He is expert in relishing. But Radhika is Mahabhava Swarupini and she is Kalavati expert to show her emotions in her face very spontaneously in her whole body, in her gestures, moving with her hands, how she's walking, how she's sitting. And on her face, the eyes are reddish, the lips are also red, like a blooming cherry. So, eyebrows are also very unstable, <laughs> always playing. So, in this emotional expression, Krishna enjoys so much, because this is real nidhi, ocean of Radha, where rasa is drowning and drowning and drowning. So, and when these emotions from face, bodily gestures combine together, this is the call for union, some book. And Manjari are so fortunate persons, they can witness this, to observe this, to relish this, and to serve this wonderful Yuga Lakishore, like Suniti said, Kama Kayatri. Yeah. I just wanted to say this. So wonderful. Thank you all for sharing your feelings and opening your precious, sensitive hearts to all of us here. I also want to ask one question that came to me this morning. Maybe someone has an idea. Like you said so nicely, Gauranga Prabhu, that uh, the Mandaris have this beautiful service to, to be there and assist Swamini and all of her desires, to fulfill all of the desires of Moha. And um, this beautiful service, although both of them are so drowning in, in each other's love, they are fully out of any kind of, how do you say, control. But the mantras, they, they can serve and, and they have this beautiful bhavu lasarati, they can feel everything because they must be so feelingly that they know when is the right moment to do this or that or what is needed now, what eye glance is needed when Krishna is looking what eye glance is needed when Swamini is needing something. But at the same time, they are so balanced and they are so completely 
in their service, then I would like to know, how is this possible? What is your feeling that this is possible, that mandarins can do it? They don't become overwhelmed. They become, you know, they also have the feelings they perceive in that, in that moment of their oneness. But they are not uh, out of control. They are never out of their service mode. How is this possible? Can someone give me some enlightenment of their feelings? Please. Maybe uh, one Manjuri, Guru Manjuri can tell us. <laughs> I wanted to suggest this. <laughs> yes, please, Guru, break your silence. No, <laughs> not silent. I'm releasing your words. Manjari feel so much responsible responsibility because Swami is Mahabhava Sarupa. Always she goes in Mahabhav. In highest feeling. Anything happened only by the thinking of his lover Krishna. And she is, has to care also to the Samni's lover also, that he is also happy. And she has to take care of the Samni also. And this all she learned from Samni and Guru Manjari how to careful in the service and to fix yourself without no deviation for your Swami. And Manjari always try to do what she can do the best. And always she feel unqualified by doing also that I have to learn more and more and to I have to develop more qualities to serve your Samani. What a special gift we got from our Gurudev to move in the service in Sadhak Deha, what is not possible for the human animal body who is only thinking for material all is grace 
<laughs> grace is like this that it grows every day flow like a ocean waves in the heart so all this service is silent service how much you pour then very great you receive the Thank you, Mahesh. And they help us all the time. Everyone is helping. Even the Swami is helping. Krishna is helping. <laughs> And their devotees are helping, all are helping. Where you will find this way of help and mercy, nowhere. Radhe, Radhe. I just remembered that sometimes Mandri is taking a photo from the lovely face of Krishna in some special occasion, and but she's not doing this for her enjoyment. She's actually taking this photo in her heart to later give it to Swamini in a special moment. So actually the Mandri and the Kinkari, their only concentration is to Serve Radharani to stabilize her, to bring her together with her beloved, and to give fire to their exchange so that the love which is exchanged in the moment can even go higher. So their concentration is completely on this point. And this is actually their enjoyment. And they don't want this enjoyment. It's not that they are doing this because of this enjoyment. It's not their goal. But actually, when Radharani is enjoying, then the Manjari has the same feelings. And when Krishna is enjoying, then Radharani enjoys even more because Krishna is enjoying. And so the Manjari also enjoys more because Radharani's enjoyment is growing. So we can see that actually the highest enjoyer, if you would just think one moment like this, because Manjari is not the enjoyer, but the highest enjoyment is coming to them. Why otherwise? Krishna is climbing up in the tree, changing the rule with the Manjari. He is looking from outside through the lattice into the conch. He is looking. He is enjoying. And the Mandri is actually putting the oil on Radharani's body, on her limbs, like Shyam is doing. It is said in this text. So actually, sometimes 
he also likes to enjoy from this view. That's why he came as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's also one point. So if we see that why the Mandaris should enjoy with Krishna or only with Radha when she is not together with Krishna, why? The highest taste is when Radharani is completely full of joy because she actually she is fulfilling the wishes from Mohan. He could even not think about them. So this moment when the mandaris are there, it's the highest enjoyment and they have to be stable to increase the enjoyment of Radharani and Mohan. And that's why they have this nature, because they are completely selfless. If they would enjoy, they could, have, could not have this nature. It would be contradictive. Mm -hmm. So they have to be very stable. And if we really think about this, the Manjuris, they have so many possibilities to see Krishna's sweetness, to have all his aspects for them. They could have. But they are not interested. They take a picture of this, an emotional picture of this, and then they will give it to her beloved Swamini. That's their greatness. Like Gurudev, he could be completely deep in meditation all the time, in Samadhi, but why he is not doing? Because he's stabilized in his seva. He actually wants to share with us. He wants to grow us. He wants to let us dive deep. Okay. So this is what Goravanik explained. Actually, this is the Seva Rupaya. Someone who is embodiment only of Seva. Gopis, Sakis are not embodiment of Seva. This is not their natural position in a such a way, in a such intensity, like Manjaris. And this Seva Rupaya cannot exist without serving, loving service. And this nature, Svabhava, of Seva Rupaya, someone who is embodiment of Seva, is very nicely explained in this word, that Manjari is a bud. Manjari has all, all, all emotions and all intensity of emotions are in this bud. But she doesn't want to open her bud and to become a flower. She doesn't want that. She wants that all these emotions for service, loving service to Swamini and her lover, be concentrated in her heart, in her all body, in her all presence. So there is no question at all that she can be under the influence of the madness between Radha and Krishna, which can appear because of their love. Nature of Manjaris, their Svabhava, natural nature, is not 
to enjoy even the whiff, but to have all these emotions condensed in the bava, in the bud form, because their nature is seva rupaya. Only to say they are existing only because of seva. Without seva, they are they are dead. Mm. They want to die without seva. So there is no any question in their hearts in any moment that they that some desire, like Gauravani said, appears in their heart to any in any way to enjoy. So this is Swabhava. Uh, nature, like water. Nature of the water is to be liquid. It can be freeze, like ice, but you cannot change the nature of the water. It will evaporate, and then again will come in the form of the water. Because this is the form, no one can change the nature of the water. In the same time, no one can change the nature of Manjari, that she is Swarup Rupai, uh, Seva Rupaya, in the form of Bud, where all services are also in the form, very condensed, very condensed in the this Bud, and all emotions are very condensed. And Gauravani used these words, they are stable. Yes, they are stable because they are completely table fixed in their bab, stay bab, in their nature. This is my understanding and meditation on this very nice question, which is often devotees are asking how it's possible. It's not possible for someone who has a whiff of personal desire. And this is why <laughs> Gurudev many times said, actually Manjari Bhav is most difficult to practice. They are exposed to such intensity of love between Radha and Krishna, and in the same time, they don't have any whiff of whiff of whiff of personal desire to enjoy even this pastime. This is secondary, third thing. So that's I wanted to to say this seva rupaya, bad form, condensed emotions, and absence of any kind of personal desires. Otherwise, they will be flowers. <laughs> Radhi, Radhi, could I, could I add on a question? Because I, I do feel confused, maybe like most devotees on this point, uh, from the comment of for your comment, Sharang uh, and Garavani. What I feel that we read in, in Saraswati in, in this text and also in with Raghunatha Das Goswami and Jirap Kusmajari is immense suffering changing into immense bliss and all the variations in between of emotions. So every, essentially every commentary to every verse begins with despair, which transforms into bliss, which then redescends into despair over and over and over again. So I, maybe I'm misunderstanding a little bit. I don't, I don't see the stability I see as part of the function of the of the Manjari Bhav, at least in this shift from Sadikavesh to Siddhavesh, 
to have a great variation in emotion. Am I misunderstanding? Actually, you are talking from two levels, right? Because in the Lapkusa Manjali, there is the Sadaka level and there is the Manjari level. The Manjaris are always stable. But the Sadak Avesh is coming back and that's why they are so depressed or, how you say, niedergeschlagen, uh, completely down in the moment when they are again in their sadaka avish. So, but the Mandri herself is always stable completely. There is no whiff of change. The only wish they have is to serve Radhika. And there, of course, are also these waves. Sometimes they serve for Milan and sometimes the surf in Vira. So sometimes so many is uh, helped by them to stabilize and to to overcome this time when she doesn't meet her beloved. And sometimes the meeting is served that it becomes even more sweet and even more intense. So, but actually it's a very stable service, so it's not changing from the point of view of uh, the Mandri or the Kinkari. The only change is that when we hear from Vilap Manjali, this is out of the view of a sadak. So, but it's a very high stage of sadaka because they are meditating and they are going in direct service, but then the vision vanishes and they have to come back in sadak. And even though they have the highest state of sadak avish, which means they always are connected with their spiritual form, still it's a suffering because they cannot perform direct seva. They have to go back in their meditation of doing seva. And this is also a difference. If, because if you are meditating on your seva or you're doing it directly, there's a big difference of taste. And uh, of the taste doesn't mean that they want to enjoy. The taste is that Swamini is enjoying because she is giving enjoyment to her Mohan. So actually, this is the, the movement in Bilap Kusumanjali or also in other scriptures from such high level devotees, Radhanasis. Thank you. I don't know if I correctly understood your question, but according to Gauravani's answer, <coughs> I can suspect actually this moment can be realized only in bhajan. How deep emotions and pure emotions are in Manjari. We can give some short answers which are satisfied or not, but each devotee who wants Manjari Bhav, by the time, through the days, months, years, by condensing his own Bhava, can be able to understand this unique position of Manjaris. It's not possible by the questions, answers, books, even explanations. Because 
like Goravani said, when in the beginning of the commentaries or in many verses, Raghunath is praying in Sadakavesh to Swamini. He is praying for direct service because his nature is to serve. His breath is to serve. His existence is to serve directly. And he cannot tolerate to be without Swamini, but without service to Swamini. Sometimes we think, I want to be with Swamini. I want that she put a glance on me. I want to hear her voice. But in our mind never crossed the idea, I just want to serve her. I want to do something for her. We can check in our hearts, because I'm speaking it from my own experience. This desire to be with Swamini is the more stronger than desire to serve the Swamini. But in the heart of Raghunath is opposite. He wants to serve the Swamini. This is his main goal. And secondary thing is, I will be with her, because I have to serve her. But main goal is I want to attain loving position of loving maid servant. Servant, not her companion. This is great difference in the feelings. So true bhajan, which I missed so much. Feelings has to be revealed. Because in the beginning of this commentary, it said as somewhere in the beginning, I cannot. Actually, the, no one can practice raga bhakti without mercy. And this is not technical words. I have to know which kind of mercy I want. It's not Shastric words and technical formulas for success. Because this mercy has to be infused in heart of Sadaka in the form of feelings not in the in the mind not in the brain not in the hands not in the in the heart then the brain legs hands eyes will work according to the infusion from the heart and it should be realized and we need time step by when step we say that the the Manjari Bhav is the Manjari uh, role is the shadow of Radharani, and Radharani's feelings are varying from high to low, as we just described. Doesn't that mean that the Manjari feelings are varying and are instable as well, and must be and should be, and thank God they are? No, for my understanding, it's not. No. Shadow is always following. Okay. The source. Source can be unstable, but shadow is always following the source, very stable in a stable way, very fixed way. So, if I stand, if I understand right, then uh, whatever means when the original is shaking, then the shadow is also shaking. But no. you mean that. Uh, 
the shadow is always in the same line like Radhika. So both, it depends on the point of view, would be from the description, it would be right, actually. But um, it just sees like that. It, it just looks like that because Manjri is not unstable from the feelings because she's fixed no. of the seva actually that's, that's no. the point maybe or no i don't understand maybe you you explain more specific i'm not good in explaining these things but the point is this is very difficult so this is the reason i said we have all to have feelings and we receive the mercy that we can feel it because sometimes words cannot be explained mm. This is Achintya. These things has to realize. These things has to be realized. True. Yes. Rudev, just one one thing came. I, I don't know if, if it at all uh, is makes sense, but since Brother Rani has so high emotions all the time, always a group of manjuris has to be there around her <laughs> i feel yeah. like rupa has to be in the front rati has to be in the back guru manjari on the side you know so maybe this creates the stability around her so we always have to support each other so that we can support her guru i don't know i was just feeling this like to catch her bhav, we have to be many. That's her mercy to us. They are all giving mercy. Because their wives give mercy. Vibration of realize and elevated so They don't talk, but the vibration gives them. Mm. So, luckiest person. They only receive the wives. You go to any elevator source, you have nothing to talk. You sit sometime and disappear. <laughs> Once you receive that moment of life, that works in life. They give vibration. And that is the wife of the mercy. Which goes inside very high wives out there of right. their realization. Mm -hmm. And when our part is clean, we can keep it. And my part is dirty. I know received that the point. A point is turned down, then I cannot receive it. So that's why the importance to always stick to the Guru Manjari, no? Because yeah. her, she can, she has the high vibration, she can take it and she can. This also vibration, receiving, 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 it part become clean. Mm -hmm. That is the nature of. Automatic is without doing not have a force. By the association, it is changed. And what you receive, that is your bank balance. <laughs> if you're not expand it, it's in the bank. Safe. <laughs> yeah. That's the point. And how we ex expand it when we misuse something in the right way not in right that we lose
So intelligent people always care for what they do, right or wrong. So to develop my Stai Bhav Gurudev, I have to watch and learn from those who have it. Yeah, association. association. What I want, I have to be in that association. That association automatic give the mercy. Mm -hmm. Like small boys. They need to make career. Who has a more career? You live in, in that place. That association. That association. It not bother if circumstances is favorable. They will get it, and when they get, after is no botheration. That's the point. So and they understand this, this association. They Saturday, Sunday, they no go to seeing the place. They are working. So this, they realize it. So I will never get to this. I have to not to miss this chance. These are the mercy that they realize it. So if I want 24-7 to be in Seva Bhav, I have to stay with somebody who is 24-7. No, if I want to serve there, I have to be with someone who is serving there. Yeah. How I want to be, I have to find that association of how I am, I find that association. Desire of mercy. Again, it comes. So, always there is a sadhu sabdhan. We never say, centrally, people be careful. He no say that. Who is not centrally, they care for. They no need to care. But if you want to be a centrally person, centrally and demoniac, if you want to be a demoniac, then why to care? And if I want to be a centrally, I have to care. Means if I want to live in purity, you know? Yes. You see, Krishna, what he's doing, Vrindavan. What is his job? Huh? Ask, I'm asking. But Krishna's job is in Vrindavan, to distract everyone. No. <laughs> Krishna is taking care of animals. Yeah. If we are animal conscious, <laughs> Up to Krishna, yeah. I can think. Yes. What is animal? Mm -hmm. Who don't know them? He's my sister, mother, mother father. No relation, no feeling, no God consciousness. This is animal. And who is follow the love. They are the gopis, sakis, and majiris. They become the elevated soul. They realize that they are soul, and that is always in love and service. God is 
So always taking care of animals. And it means if you are not conscious with me, that who I am, I am animal. No difference. Behavior uh, animal is doing sleeping. What they do? Sleep, sex, and eat. What we do? Sleep, sex, and eat. These animals do. Right? Rock, rock. Why I will realize if I am animal, I want this. And if I want something higher than is love, higher than this, then God will see me. But if I know love, then this Krishna will help you to increase your consciousness, to find yourself. You come for something, you have to do something, you have to develop something, and that is start with the spirituality, not from body. They never die. And who lives in the body, they all die. One is living for that, one is happening that. You eat for keeping your body, and I am living for eating. I am living for doing sex. I am living for sleeping. And it, I rest because I become tired. I eat because I have to keep my body. I married, so I have to do the sex to be to keep the peace in my wife. Is a different thing for personal enjoyment. Anything doing is involving myself in animal consciousness. Living in bodily consciousness. This is the problem. This is the block. So we don't need Radha, we need only God consciousness. Even I don't want to know the Krishna. <laughs> I want to make the God immortal. I will order and He will supply it. If I will make the relation, order and supply will not happen. Explain. If you make relation, you cannot go to the shopping, to the shopman. You cannot order and he will supply you. It is a stop. He's my son. I cannot order him and he will supply me. He, he has to care because I am old man. I I have to care him because he is my son. No order, no supply. This is relation. This is a lot.
Sorry. I don't know why it's coming. Because when Mataji came from this France, was the so maybe it's coming like this. But these are the our blockage. It was in me, so I'm sharing this. Not that anyone is disturbed. He is living. I was living. Now I feel this. That moment was my suffering time. Now by the mercy of Radha Krishna, I got mercy of Radharani. And by mercy of Radharani, by Guru Kripa, I hope something will change in my life. Pratheras, bless me for me that your association helps to me that I can change myself. Pratheras. Pratheras.